this just in we have another podcast for you welcome back to the podcast uh a matter of speaking a podcast for leading voices brought to you by speaker mastermind you know me i'm dylan my hair gets longer my beard gets longer i'm doing my best to maintain it um, but really we're doing our best to continue to interview uh leading voices in the industry of health wealth and relationships in in hopes to find other leading voices or aspiring leading voices aspiring thought leaders yet you watching this this man or woman right you right there you have a message in your heart you have a mastery in your mind you want to get it out to the world it's tough like getting outside our comfort zone is difficult as all hell um what we hope to do is have have this podcast and talk to these guests and understand their stories realize that they're just like us. I'm not going to speak to the the super ritzy people. I want to speak to people like us that are putting our, their, themselves out on the front lines to talk about something they care about in hopes to reaching you and, and, and helping you get there. Or if you're in that journey to encourage you and to motivate you to keep going. Um, today, we speak in kind of the realm of relationships, really in the realm of divorce. We're going to speak with Liz Hodson talk about the mom mixer, talking about going through the dark side of life, not seeing that that picture that other people paint for you. Um, and as a child of divorce, they were never divorced. I'm a bastard, but they went through the divorce process. This was huge for me. Um, it was a really fun podcast. It's, it's like short, sweet to the point podcast. Appreciate Liz. You want to know a little bit more about Liz? Um, Grew up in Southern California. In 2003, she felt it was time to resume her destiny of service. She enrolled at the University of Santa Monica. She studied spiritual psychology. And if I knew you could get a degree in that, I'd be all on it. That sounds awesome. Um, it was a graduate program and way over her head, uh, but she would not be denied. She pushed through the two years. She used to drive to this college force herself to throw up, to give her a reason to not go, drive home, look in the window and see her daughter and say, nope, I'm going back, drove back. She would drive to school twice just to get through this, got her cert certification. Uh, she started a group at Santa Clarita, California called the Moms Mixer, which became very successful. Uh, she talks about that. Super cool how it came to be. She had a weekly radio show and a column in a local magazine. She began taking on clients, created a flourishing business, then life hit her. Went through a really difficult divorce, dark night of the soul. Her daughter was feeling the effects, not doing well in school. She stopped everything to focus on helping her through all of this and just being a good mom. She said she got to a point where she just asked her, how can I be a better mom for you consistently? I think that's so cool. Um, she has since restarted her business and working with moms and kids that have shared similar experiences. The challenges she faced has made her better, well-rounded coach. She feels that we are all open and willing and that given a clear path with guidance, we can be limitless. She talks about the story that she was told as a kid, the story of perfection, how it didn't come to be, how she found her own transparency through it, um, how we can do the same thing, how the dark side isn't a bad thing, Star Wars. Um, we talk about divorce. We talk about how no cooperation means no transformation. We only get one shot. She, she wants to get her voice out there and be authentically her. I think you're really going to like it. And if you do, click the thing that says that you like it because it helps the algorithm, right? Comment what you like about it. Comment what you hate about it. Um, subscribe for more of this. We're, we're trying to be real. We want to be as real as possible. Help us grow it. Um, or don't, I don't give a shit, <laughs> but speaking of growing it, speaking of this podcast, it's brought to you by speaker mastermind over the last eight years, this company has made it a mission to help its coaching and consulting clients get their authentic message out to the world in hopes of reaching their own desired audience through the power of speaking and business building with over 650 clients landing a TEDx talk soon to be Liz hundreds more speaking on virtual physical stages around the world. Speaker mastermind has perfected the art of delivering a top tier message. They also offer programs to build and scale your own high ticket program and authentically, authentically market and sell it to your desired audience. If you have a message in your heart, if you have a mastery in your mind and you wish to share it uh, with your desired audience, click there's links below you can watch webinars from Taylor, 
Um, you can check us out on a bunch of social platforms. If any of the links aren't working, check out our socials, reach out. You're going to be talking to me. Um, I'll get you the resources and what you need. We'd love to have you as part of the community. But that being said, I'm going to shut up. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to just transition over to me where I keep talking. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to It's a Matter of Speaking, a podcast for leading voices in the industry of health, wealth, and while I like to say relationships, today we're saying divorce or separation of relationships. Uh, we are talking with Liz Hodson. She is a client in Thought Leader Accelerator, going through the process to land her own TEDx talk. Um, and we're going to talk about the mom mixer today. But uh, first off, I want to just welcome you to the podcast. Liz, welcome. Thank you, Dylan. So grateful to be here. I'm very, very excited. Oh, we're excited to have you. I, uh, we were saying that we're going to have a shit ton of fun before this goes. You you are allowed to swear if you like. Wow. Um, I'm going to jump right into my first question, uh, which is for you being on a podcast where we're talking to leading voices in the industry. Mm -hmm. I am curious what it means for you to be a leading voice, specifically how you talk about like really helping parents, women, parents go through divorce and be okay, be vulnerable, be transparent, as you say, to talk about the dark side of it. I think a lot of people almost see it as taboo, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. You're encouraging it. And that's a leading voice. What does it mean for you to be a leading voice in the industry of divorce? Um, well, basically, my goal in life is to touch hearts everywhere I go mm. and to travel the world to be able to do that. Um, and I'd like to promote that on social media, getting on stage, anything like that. You know, people don't like to talk about the dark sides of divorce. And I'm here to be transparent to talk about the dark sides that we go through as well. Mm -hmm. You talk about your your uh, destiny of service, right? We're going to talk about resuming it when you go back to college to get your degree in uh spiritual psychology. But right. where do you feel this destiny of service started for Liz Hodson? Um, you know, really quick, it started, I think, when I was like nine years old. My parents took me to see this movie called Billy Jack. It was a place where no nine-year-old should be. But um, basically, <laughs> um, it, 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 it just enlightened me. I always remember this town that saved all the people that were talking about real stuff and they created a town for all these transparent people and they were all kids. So mm. that started at nine. I always, always wanted to do that. I mm. always knew I wanted to help people um, basically. And I love that you talk about like transparency, right? Like being so authentically us and letting that shine. I think it's as simple as it sounds. I think it's also very difficult to find that in the world nowadays. It's easy to just kind of uh, assimilate to a tribe to feel safe. But what you're saying is be your transparent self. So you've always had this in you. Yes. What gave you the urge to resume that destiny? Because in 2003, you go back to school, University of Santa Monica, into spiritual psychology, which I did not know was a degree. I think that's awesome. I wish I would have went into it. What gave you that urge to resume that destiny? Well, um, basically, you know, we always, as women, have this dream because we see Disney shows of this perfect wedding and this perfect marriage and this perfect life from Cinderella or whatever. And I always wanted that. And so basically, when I got married, um, I realized it wasn't cracked up what it was to be the mm -hmm. picture I had. And so basically, um, I was committed to raising my daughter. But when she turned five years old and went to kindergarten, I decided that I needed to do something more with my life on top of being a mom. And I went back to school in 2003. Why love that? What gave you the call to spiritual psychology? Well, I feel on some level I'm very spiritual mm -hmm. and the spiritual part just brought me in. And the one, the first day, you know, I, I was raised that I had a label in fifth grade that, you know, I had a learning disability and I wasn't smart enough. And so since I wasn't smart enough, I might as well get married and marry a rich man. And that's where I'll be successful. Mm -hmm. I really believed that for a long time. And basically, 
um, when I signed up for school, all those old beliefs were coming up, like you're not good enough, you can't go to school. My first two years, I say my first year of going there, I would drive all the way to Santa Monica. It was like a 40 minute drive. I would get to school, literally make myself throw up, believe that I was sick, get in my car, drive all the way home, park the car, walk by the, the window, seeing my little daughter watching TV, thinking, why am I going to tell her mommy's home? I would get back in the car, drive all the way back to school and make myself break that belief that I was good enough to be in school and I could do this. I did that every weekend for a year. My gosh, I'm so excited <laughs> to talk about the uncomfort part of this uh, podcast of yes. the, the gas, the gas prices. Oh, thankfully, yeah. were lower then, but yes. that's a lot of friggin driving. So you're in University of Santa Monica, you're going to school literally like forcing yourself to do it because yes. you know it's what you're called to do and sometimes we have to do it how did you then because what you do now with the mom mixer leans more towards from my research a little bit more towards the dark side of divorce but that's uh -huh. not how it started right. how did you how did you get started through help in the field of helping moms through the mom mixer and if you could explain the mom mixer yeah. right so before, uh, of course, before school, um, I remember when I had Leah, I, I put on like 80 pounds. And when I had her, everyone was talking about how great motherhood was. And mm -hmm. then I would talk to people, but I'm going through this. And people would just like ignore, like, well, what mm -hmm. about this? And I had nobody to talk to. So I decided that I was going to invite like her, um, somebody from the market, anyone that looked like a mom come to my house. And I ended up inviting like 50 moms that I didn't know who showed up at my house. Um, wow. It was on a Thursday evening from seven to nine. We sat in a circle. I gave each mom three minutes to talk about motherhood and basically just let their hair down. Um, this became a project in school. And little did I know that the newspaper was there, the radio station was there, and I just wanted to do it once. Well, this ended up blossoming on the radio, in the newspapers, and I started doing it once a month. And I was very well known in Santa Clarita for creating the mom's mixer. Mm. So it was always, you know, that. And basically that's what started the mom's mixer. So it's it's a place where moms can let their hair down. Did you find giving each of these moms three minutes to talk that some of them like did they did they all start trying to talk about how it's a blessing or did you have moms right away opening up and to be like, can I tell you what kind of sucks sometimes? Like, did you get that right away? Um, basically I would start the group and say, I'm creating a safe place for you to be real here. You get three minutes to talk. You don't get this opportunity. And this is, let's talk about, you know, the dark sides of motherhood. This is the guidelines here. And there's no husband bashing. There's no drama bashing. Let's just be real here. So each mom, when I would start and be a little vulnerable, then it carried on to everybody else. Do you remember some of those initial three? Like, were any of them kind of shocking of like, whoa, good for you. Way to bring this up. They we were all we're not saying names here. No, they were all shocking. It, yeah. it, was, it was so nice to see these moms so vulnerable and really talk about the poopy parts of motherhood. So Literally. It was wonderful. And they loved me. I mean, I was just like, you know, so. They're yeah. like, I get to talk about this shit. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So for you, being able to talk about the poopy parts figuratively and literally like huh. why why does all of that matter to you for these women because clearly it matters to other people why does it matter to you to get it started because you know i always needed i'm i'm always a person to open to learn and grow mm. and if people aren't going to tell me what they did during these poopy parts to make a change or you know i always want to learn like how do I be a better person? So that's what was important to me. And people gave me feedback as mm. well. So, you know, and then with let on that, I was very well respected. And then I find out, you know, um, my husband is, has a girlfriend and he leaves me in the middle of grad school. So then it turned into the divorce thing. Yeah, if you do, I was going to ask with this, like, do you mind talking about the bump in the road, right? Because you're given this amazing thing. You're saying it's okay to like to, to venture into the dark side, and then you go through yes. a dark night of the soul. Like, yes. what what was that? 
what was that journey like? Because you pulled back a little bit for a bit. Yes. Yeah. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. I was a little... Say it again. Rightfully so. Yes. I, you know, I was a little celebrity and my daughter in Santa Clarita, like Liz Hodson's getting divorced. What? Mm. What? You know, we all look up to her. It looked like she had the perfect house and the perfect marriage. Well, lo and behold, I have to tell you that, you know, I'm being transparent here, but mm -hmm. you know, he had a lot of girlfriends and I didn't know this mm. and they were moms as well. And these girlfriends were coming into my home for the mom's mixer to see the lifestyle I had. Okay. They were paying me to get my advice, but to also to see the lifestyle my husband had in my home. Isn't that crazy? That is that that one hit. <laughs> that one that one hit. Like, do you mind if I ask? Like, can I ask? Because you say you're transparent. Can I ask some questions? Like, yes, ask whatever you like. How like? So you, how do you learn that, oh my gosh, these women are here? How do you like, how do you, how does it hit you at first? And then what shift do you have to make to the mom mixer? Did you just like pause it or there's well, so many questions after that? That's okay after that. No worries. So basically I created the mom's mixer right when around Leah was born and, and it blossomed until about 2004 is when I started, um, uh, so then it blossomed in around 2004, I want to say, I found out he was uh, had girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And that's when I kind of shut my doors and went down a dark hole and I stopped doing the mom's mixer. And then I later on had found out that, you know, 90% of these moms were either my clients or coming to the mom's mixer. So I found out later. Now, I'm... I, there's something about me that I'm a very neutral person. Like I love people, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a reason for everything. And for me, I wasn't really blaming these women. I kind of thought it was weird. You would come into my home, but yeah. I just looked at it as my husband had so many insecurities. Like mm -hmm. this is what he needed to do to feel better about himself. So it wasn't really about me, mm -hmm. but it was more or less he, you know, hurt my daughter and he hurt me on mm -hmm. top of it, but it wasn't really about me. Like at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you know, I, I regret this today, but I, back then I did pray like bad things would happen to him, you know, and here I am 25 years later and he is a lonely man. And this is what I prayed for. And mm -hmm. I love him. And it makes me sad that I prayed for this and it's been created. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause, cause my first question was going to say, what was the initial impact? Right. Yeah. Where it's like you're frustrated at someone. Oh. You can understand it. Right. It's less about yeah. you, but what he's doing to his daughter. Yes. You, you go through a bit of the dark side. Yes. And now I'm curious. So that's that's the dark side of it. Now you're looking back. What do you see now in hindsight was the biggest lesson for you as you go through that? Um, basically, I let it take me down. Mm. Um, there's just a few things in life from then before in my life that I let things take me down mm -hmm. and it took me down. I went down a deep dark of addiction. Um, and then I realized I woke up one day going, this is affecting my daughter. You know, I need to be a role model out there. Mm -hmm. I need to get out there and really talk about how I feel and talk about divorce. And how do you become a single mom? How do you become all this? Because we never went to school. Like you go get, you go and, and get a job and they ask for a resume. But when I was pregnant, nobody asked me for a resume. It's mm -hmm. the most important job in the world, mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. be a wife and then a mom. So you know, nobody taught me that. And I realized I had to be there for my daughter. And I think like you were saying, it's growing up, you get this, this perfection is put on you and this, this picture of this is what you do. And you, you find your, your Prince Charming out there. And that's the story that's told. So that's what we think of that we grow up. And no one tells the story of, Hey, it's how you grow up and become a single mom. So yeah. you're not prepped for it. <laughs> um, so Another thing that you said in there is you went through the dark side, but what you let it do, like the biggest lesson is you let it take you down. Yes. What was the, do you recall the moment? Cause you're clearly not there now. You're fun to talk to. You don't oh. feel like you're in the dark. Do you recall the moment where you pulled yourself up by your bootstraps? Yes. And remember this is 25 years ago. When so. you were, oh, Kansas. <laughs> when you were 20. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm 62, but that's. Come on. Take the compliment. <laughs> 
I actually do remember. I, I remember just being really, I was high one night and I remember, you know, the next day getting up and really not remembering, you know, taking care of my daughter. Mm. And I just knew that this wasn't right. Like mm -hmm. you can't continue to raise her like this, you know? And then my head goes, God, she's going to be an addict and, you know, and, and mm -hmm. she's going to pick up all this stuff. And so that's when I decided to clean up my life. And I decided to thank him for making me that much stronger. Mm -hmm. And I decided to pray for him and, and just hope the best for him mm -hmm. after I came out of that. Mm -hmm. And from that day forward, always asked myself and asked her, which is a hard question to ask your kids, especially if they're not loving you, how can I be a better mom today? What oh. can I do to be a better, better mom today? I love that. I think there's so many times where it's like, you must listen to me because I am the authority figure That's in your parent, right. but it takes so much to say, Hey, how can I, yeah. what can I do to be better for you? Man, yeah. kudos to I you. Know. And how long after, so you have this dark night of the soul, you, you I don't, hit rock bottom just for lack of a better word. And you're like, no, I don't want to do this. You pick yourself up by your bootstraps. What gave you the idea to bring, when did the mom mixer come back? Um, so basically I, I haven't really started it again. Like okay. it's not, it's not going anymore because basically, like I said, in the beginning, I want to get out in the world Got and it. get myself out there on the stages and stuff. So, um, so it's not, I didn't really recreate it. I start, tried to recreate it for a little while, but I just felt moved to move on to bigger things. And bigger things, you're, you know, you're applying right now to speak on the red dot, right? The yeah. TEDx stage. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. for you. What's at the heart of that message? Um, my message for me is helping parents find peace, love, joy, and freedom as they go through divorce. My, mm -hmm. um, you know, my famous line is that divorce doesn't have to end in war. Some people it has to, but no. So, you know, I had a mentor myself who helped me get through it. And I said, one day I want to be like her. And now your job is to help other people say, man, that's one day I want to be like Liz Hodson. That's right. You talk about, um, in your work, you talk about solutions for separation, right? What does solutions for separation boil down to for you? So basically I decided I'm really all about the solutions. I, you know, um, um, you know, to me, no cop, no cooperation, no transformation, you know, let's talk about the problem and let's get to the solution. So I created a 12 week program where some of my clients that I interview can have access to me 24 seven. And each week they, I meet with them for an hour and I give them little things of homework to get rid of their rage, to get rid of their loneliness, you know, to find their smile again, to find their joy again, to find peace again, to find love and find freedom. Mm. So, and all of that is my 12 week program. And by the end of the program, they're done. And then they go on to maintenance once a month. Hmm. So it's basically, they have a program to work. It's not traditional therapy. Yeah. And someone that's been through it, that's kind of the question I like, what makes you unique to, to be able to do this with these, these women that are reaching out to you? You know, I don't want to offend you or anyone and, you know, but I do have to tell you that. He doesn't when, want to when... offend me. <laughs> Sorry, I was talking to someone. Go ahead. <laughs> well, people say when they're done with my program, it's like magic. I'm mm -hmm. like an orgasm. You feel so great. You can't explain what happens to you. You thought that was going to offend me, lady? That's awesome. <laughs> Some people get offended and I have to be very careful as well. But that's what I'm like. And um, um, so, yeah. Um, so if you're looking for an orgasm, no. <laughs> um, you you <laughs> are unique. Me. I'm magical. I can make it happen without. You can't explain it. You can't that's explain right. it. You can't explain it. And that would be a question. That how do people find Like, how do people find you? Where Where can people find Liz Hodson? I believe you even said the first call people have is free. Like, yes. How do people find you? So they can go to my website, um, lizhodson.com. 
Okay. Um, I do have a, you know, a first hour is free because I do interview my clients. I don't mm -hmm. just hire anybody. Mm -hmm. um, so they can go there as well. I am on Facebook as Liz Weiss um, hyphenated Hodson. Um, so I am a little on Instagram, but that's like a little out of my league because yeah. I'm old school. So of course people say, you know, old school, let's stick to Facebook as I well. I've created my comic company solely off of Facebook and a little bit of Instagram. So I'm right there with you. Um, so if you're watching, we'll, it, we'll put those links below lizhodson.com. We'll put the Facebook link as well. If you want, we'll put the Instagram link, but if you're looking for an orgasm, you go to well, Liz Hodson. I'm going to come back to this. You can't offend me, but hopefully I don't offend as I keep bringing it up. Um, with all of this, Liz, what is it that you're, um, what is it you're looking to achieve through all of this, through working with these women? I really or want parents. to go Sorry. ahead. Yeah. Just, I said women or parents. My yeah, apologies. I do get some dads, you know, mm -hmm. but I've never really walked in their shoes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I'm so passionate what I do that, um, um, that, can you ask me that question again? Yeah. What is it that, and my apologies, because I said moms no. and parents, I took you off. What is it you're looking to achieve? Oh, with the, with the women that you work with. Okay. Um, so basically uh, I do work on one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. but basically I just want to create a community of women or single dads who can just feel like they're not alone. They can let their hair down and see the darkness of, um, of divorce and to mm -hmm. be real. So I just want to travel the world and just create communities and, and see that it's okay it's okay to, you know, to go through this because you're only human mm -hmm. and, you know, people on social media and they make it look so good. And I kind of resent people. It's like show some dark sides too. So, yeah. you know, it, people either love me or they just hate me and it's yeah. not really about me. You know, well, I'm, the, I'm the former. I love you. <laughs> and actually, because you've talked about the word dark side often, and I think in modern day society, it, it is painted in a bad picture, right? It's like you think of Star Wars, they say, don't go to the dark side, right? right. Like it right. is for you, you talk about it so transparently, it's like you shine a light on it. Why, why is the dark side okay? Like, why do you feel the dark side is okay or good even? Well, I mean, I was also raised that, you know, we brush everything under the carpet. And mm -hmm. as long as we look good, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. So if I talk the truth, you know, um, you know, people won't like our family. So I wasn't allowed to as a kid. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, some traumatic, I went through some really bad trauma and, you know, my parents like ignored it. And I remember mm -hmm. going back to school and the counselors calling them saying I was in private school in Malibu. So it was a very small, small school. And I remember the counselors calling my mom and saying, if you don't get your daughter in therapy, we're going to have to kick her out of school mm -hmm. because this is a, whatever's going on. This is affecting her education. Mm -hmm. And so that's when my parents decided to get help, but they pretended that it didn't happen. So that's the way I was raised. You know, I do have, you know, two sisters that pretend that, you know, my mom doesn't have dementia when she really does. And they all pretend it's not happening. Mm -hmm. And so it's better that I don't talk to them because it is happening and it is reality. So, you know, not everyone's so transparent and I am. Do you remember one when that shifted and two what the biggest takeaway was for you spending some time in the dark side? When what shifted? I'm sorry. When it, do you remember when it shifted when you're like, you know what? I am going to go into the dark side. I am going to be rather than just sweep it under the rug. I am going to oh. live. Was that through the divorce or was it sooner? Uh, no, it was sooner. I, I remember being a little girl and saying, yeah. I don't want to hide this. So, and my parents always made me hide it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I did, but really I think the mom's mixer and, and getting married, I think the marriage was, you yeah. know, like, cause I really expected that white picket fence. And why did I expect that? And I thought about it and it was because of all the Disney shows I watched. Yeah.
Yeah. And uh, my perception was like blown up. How dare this man leave me for another woman? Like I'm Liz Weiss. Mm. Hudson, nobody leaves me, you know, and he did. I read the stories. This should be perfect. What's, uh, what do you think the dark side has to teach us? Oh, it's, it's room for us to grow. Like mm -hmm. that's what life's about. We get one chance. Like yesterday I was 13. Today I'm 62. Mm -hmm. And we don't get another chance of yesterday. So mm -hmm. I do. I live every day. I, I ask my daughter still at 25. I ask my partner, how can I be a better person today for you? And mm -hmm. if it feels right, you know, I do it. But, you know, that's how I get out of the dark side. Anytime I feel there's a challenge in my life, I say, okay. And I, I get on my knees and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to learn from this challenge. And how can I be a better person? And anytime I see my husband, I always thank him for making me the woman I am today. Mm. Because those dark times, dark sides, those dark times do make us. There is resolve. Yes. There is something you learn in there. And now, not only did you go through it, now you want to talk about it, and now yes. you want to normalize it for other people. Yes. So I am. The, now we get into the uncomfort zone of the podcast. Yes. The last part of it. Yes. It's, it's it can't always be comfortable to put yourself on stage and talk about hey, dark sides good. That like bad things happen, and you're talking about divorce, which society can see it can see as icky uh -huh. for you. Why did you decide to get outside your comfort zone? Why do you consistently decide to get outside your comfort zone to talk about a passion? Again, we only get one chance. Mm -hmm. So I surround myself with people who make me feel like sunshine. I make sure I do everything that I enjoy every single day. And again, you know, like I said, I mean, 62, what happened? Mm -hmm. You know, wait, wait, I'm still like little Lizzie Weiss, but mm -hmm. honestly, I'm not. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about being real here. Let's talk about life and let's enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, it's all about that. This next one might be, we might need some full transparency from Liz to, to our listeners who are, are tuning in, right? Who might want to get outside their comfort zone as well. But let's be honest, a lot of us have heard that. You get one chance. You're like, you're like to say it again. You've said it twice or three times on this podcast. People are used to hearing that and they still don't get outside their comfort zone with what they're passionate about. So for you, what do you think is the biggest reason? What do you think holds somebody back to tackling that uncomfort zone? Fear. Fear runs our world. Mm. Fear. They're just too afraid. It's like, you know, it's like my clients, you know, they dip their toe in, in water, like put your whole damn foot in. Mm -hmm. And I give them baby steps so they can get their foot in or, or I, I explain it like building a mountain. Okay. We're building a mountain together with one grain of sand at a time. So each week I'll let them know that the mountain's building higher and higher until you can get on top of it. And that's the way I look at life as well. You know, so so if someone, final question, if someone was getting to a point where they're they're on the precipice of getting outside their comfort zone, they're close, they kind of like, they dip their toe in, come back, what would be the biggest lesson? What would you want to tell someone to help get them over that hump? I remind them of their vision because mm -hmm. when I do hire my clients, we have a vision that we work towards. So I remind them of their vision and, you know, I'll usually ask them, you know, How's your life working for you today? You know, you hired me for a reason. You know, are you 100% happy spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, relationships, everything? If you can say yes to that, great. But usually they don't. So it just takes time to build all that. And mm. all my clients who do graduate my program are on top of the world. Mm. And I'm proud of them all. Well, I'm proud of you for for being a, a guide for them because some of us need to be guided. Some of us need to hear this. It's why we want to have this podcast to reach those people. It's why you want to do what you do um, with the mom mixer, LizHodson.com. And your program is, is your program just working with Liz? Yes. Solutions or, for separation. Yes. Solutions, that's for se solutions for separation is why you do what you do. We hope anyone, if you're going through this, if you need someone to talk to, LizHodson.com. If you're looking to get outside your comfort zone, like and subscribe. If you learned something today, make sure you comment below. What was the takeaways? What did you like about Liz? What did you like about me? What did you not like about me? But you can't say what you didn't like about Liz. No, you can if you want to. 
uh, I've taken away so much. I mean, we, we're talking about kind of getting the story of this perfect life and these labels that can come early on in life. And don't be afraid to break the mold, right? right? Be your transparent self. The dark side is okay as long as we don't let it take us down. Um, being able to pick ourselves up by our bootstraps, asking ourselves, how can we be better? How can I be a better father? How can I be a better husband, wife, mother, friend, sister, brother? Um, divorce doesn't have to end in war. Uh, everything that you do, I absolutely love that. As a child of divorce, I really do appreciate that. No cooperation means no transformation. And if you're looking to get outside your comfort zone, Chad Alio talked about this last week on our podcast, is we get one. We get one life. Make the most of it. Say you tried. Say you did something. And um, remind yourself of your vision. Um, Liz Hodson, I appreciate you. I appreciate your work. I appreciate you making time to be on the podcast today and spread your wisdom, spread your mastery, and spread your message. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Not Much a problem. Love everyone. Not a problem for those tuning in. We will see you next week on It's a Matter of Speaking podcast for Leading Voices. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe. As always, we'll see you next week.